is John Rinaldi, and I'm here with another one in my series of videos for control engineers who need to learn IT. That's me. I'm a control engineer. Never thought that I'd have to learn IT, but the world has changed. We all need to know some of these things. So today I'm going to talk about NAT, Network Address Translation. So what in the first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, today I'm going to talk about four different kinds of network translation. First one I talk about is one-to-one, -one, definitely the most common, the most well used. Let's think about our PLC network. So we've got a, we've got a network here that's, and we've got a PLC, we've got a drive, I've got an IO box, and I got some device X. Now this ad, this network is on a particular address, 192.168. Dot 100 dot zero slash 24 and we remember from my other videos that dot slash 24 means that there's 24 bits of network and 8 bits of host so the PLC is at 100 dot 10 let's say that put the drive at dot 20 the IO box at dot 30 and X here is at 77 so we got four devices on this network this network is connected to a NAT device because we want to do some translation here. And there's an app out here on some PC. And this PC is on a different network. So let's say that this app is on a PC and this network is 10.10, I'll draw it up here, 10.10.5.0 slash 24, okay? So we've got, we've got this, and this is at, this PC is at 10.10.5.11. So we've got, so we're, we're out here, we're connected, we're somehow connected, and that's in between these two. And let's see how this works. So we got a problem now. We've got some cycle counts in X that we need to get, and we need to get it in this app, but they're on two different networks. The NAT, we put the NAT in the middle to bridge these two networks and make this communications happen. Very typical problem in manufacturing is we need to make some data here available uh, in this app. So how does this all work? So we have, to, we have to have an address. The first thing you need is we need an address on this network that represents device X. So we got to go to our friendly IT guy who's smiling at us and says, oh, sure, no problem at all. You can have 10.10.5.55. All right, that's fine. So what we're gonna, what the NAT device is gonna do, we, we configure the NAT to say, anytime you see 10.10.5.55, you just send that over to 992.168.100.77. Simple, right? That's all the NAT does. So let's, let's look at this in a little bit of detail. So the app wants to, send a, wants to send a request to read the cycle count. So the source, of the first message going out of the app is going to be 10.10.5.11. What's its destination? Well, the destination has got to be on this network. It's what the destination that IT guy gave, gave us. So that destination is 10.10.5.55. The NAT device knows to see, if it sees this dot .55, it's got to change it to the dot .77. So the NAT device, changes that message on here to make the source it, whatever the NAT's IP address is, and the destination 192.168.100.77. So that's what the NAT did. It took this packet and it converted it and made it into that packet. Now, the, this guy gets the message then because it's directed at him, and he says, oh, okay, great, do that, and I gotta send a message back. He sends a message back. Of course, his source is 192.168.100.77. He sends it to a destination of back to the NAT, because that's all he knows is the NAT. He doesn't know anything about all these guys. The NAT gets that, now it does the reverse. It says, oh, I got a, I got a message from 192 ones that, that's uh, destined to the net from here, anytime I see that, I send it back to this, this I just do the reverse net. 
So I, I got to send it to, to 55. So it changes it to a source of 10.10.5.55. That's what, what the original destination was. And the destination is now the original source, 10.10.5.11. So when, from the application's point of view, it just looked at this part of it. It sent a message out from, from him out to, five, out to 55. 55 sent a message back. He's really happy. I, as far as he knows, that X device is on his network. The NAT did all the magic to make to change it around, to interpret the message, to change the transform the message going out so he got it. And then when he sent his response back to make it look like it came from the original address that the IT guy gave us. So one-to-one -one NAT, very simple, very straightforward, used a lot in manufacturing. Now we're going to talk about the second kind of NAT, the second most popular. It's called NAT port forwarding. All right. What is, NAT, what is port forwarding? Well, let's talk about, let's make sure we all understand what a port number is. When you have an IP packet, some kind of Ethernet message comes into a computer, there's a port number field in, buried in there someplace. That port number field is just a little director. It's got a number, and that number says, hey, send this to Outlook. Or it's not, you know, send it to the browser application. Or send it to this guy, whatever, some other app. There's a, that number means something. And then there's a number for Ethernet IP. There's a number for Profinet. There's actually several numbers. There's a number for Modbus TCP. All, all different kinds of apps have port numbers. So the port number is what we're going to use in port forwarding. Imagine that. Imagine that. So let's talk, let's talk about a situation now. In the, in the first video, we saw we had a PLC. Again, we had a drive on this network. We had an I.O. device, and then we had some device X. And this was all on 192, 168.100.0 slash 24. And we made this dot 10, this dot 20 this dot 30 and this dot 77. So the, the deal today is what, that we've got an app over here and uh, we need this app okay, again is 10 dot, this is on the 10.10.5.0 slash 24 network. And this is at 10.10.5.55, I think the way it was the last example. Now we need to get at all three of these devices, right? So we're going to go to the IT, the, the friendly IT lady, and we're going to say, hey, I need three, three IP addresses because I want to do one-to-one -one port forwarding with all three of these devices. And she says, I don't have three IP addresses to give you. I only got one. Ah, oh, crap. So now we've got, and she says, you can use 10.10.5.77. Well, let's not make it 77 because that guy's 77. Let's make it 99. So it doesn't get things don't get confused too much. So now we got now we got to figure out how we're going to do this. We only have one IP address. Well, we're going to do something called port forwarding. We're going to tell these guys to look at use a colon when you want to have a when you want to port forward. Look at 2020 as your as a port. Here your port is going to be 2030. And your port will be 2040. So now when this app wants to talk to one of those devices, a NAT configured for port forwarding is going to take this address, 10.10.5.99. So if you, it'll send a message, 10.10.5.99, colon 2040, and that'll get over to this X to this, X de this device X. So, so here's how, the, let's go here in detail, here's how this works. This guy's gonna, it's so, you're gonna send a source message is always gonna be 10.10.5.55, because that's all he knows, he knows his source. And the destination is always gonna be 10.10.5.99, and the, different, the, the difference is going to be 
a port number, and this is going to be 2020 for the drive, or he's going to put 2030 for the I.O. box, or he's going to put 2040 for device X. The NAT device is going to know that, oh, if I see this message, this destination with 2030 on it, I'm going to change that to 192.168.100.30 colon 2030 and send it there. And then it's going to work in reverse, just like we talked about with one to one. This is going to send, it's going to send, this guy's going to send a message back to the NAT. The NAT's going to say, oh, okay, this came from there. I got to send that back to, I'm going to send that back to 10.10.5.55, which was the original source. So port forwarding just as a way you could expand on one particular IP address, you can, by using port numbers, you can redirect into a whole bunch of other addresses with inside your control system. Okay, let's talk about the third one, the third kind of NAT, and this is a NAT that I'm not going to talk much about at all because there's really no use cases in OT that I know about at all. So this is called one-to-many. One-to-many is really a combination of the one-to-one -one that we went through a moment ago and the one-to, well, the port forwarding that we also went through today. So it's a way of, you could have a whole slew of addresses on the, on the IT side, and you can have a whole slew of addresses in the control system, and you can map all these things uh, from, you know, one-to-one, -one and it's using the port, not using port numbers, and it's, uh, it's something that I, I don't think any of us ever need, so I'm really not going to go into detail on the one-to-many at all. You're free to peruse the internet and try to figure it out for yourself. Believe me, that's not an easy task. Uh, because one-to-many one, one -to just isn't covered very well by, by anything. Okay, let's talk about the last and fourth kind of NAT. That's an outbound NAT. Outbound NAT, again, if we have a control system and we have a control network with a PLC and, and we have the drive and, and all the other devices we've been talking about today, X and Y, sometimes it makes more sense and sometimes these devices are set up so that they want to initiate a conversation with some network over here that's on a different kind of app, that's, that's on a different kind of network. So this is, this is again a 10.10.5.024 address. So maybe he wants to send a message to some application over here that's on, that's at .99. So X wants to initiate this communication. So maybe, and maybe we like that idea. We like having inside the, the control system initiating outgoing communications because that's inherently safer than having things from the external coming in and talking to us. And so let's think. So here, so we've got, a, so that's, that's what a, an outbound NAT is going to do. So... So X, which is say at dot 33, is going to send, you know, this is, this is again, at, at, you know, one, an internal network, 168.100.0 slash 24, dot, dot. And so at 33, so the NAT set, so the NAT is configured for outbound NATs is when it sees a message from 33 to it, it changes 33 to dot .99, and it sends it oh, and it sends it to that application. So it's serious. It's it's exactly like the one to one NAT, but only in reverse. So 192. So when the NAT sees a message from 192.168.100.33 directed to the NAT, the NAT says, "Okay, I got I can translate that." He translates it to sets the, the new destination to be 10.10.5.99 coming from the NAT and sends it to here. When this kind of issues a response, it sends the response back to the NAT. The NAT then does it goes backwards, goes the other way, sends the, the response to dot .33. So an outbound NAT is exactly like a one-to-one -one NAT, only it works in reverse. So 
that concludes the four different kinds of gnats. Thank you very much for your time and your attention today. I know this is kind of tedious, but it's something that we all, in, as control engineers, really need to understand because IT is becoming more and more a part of our life. Now, down below, what you'll see in the description field, there's a link to, to a, a paper I wrote on uh, a, a, the kinds of systems that you, you, the kinds of NAT that you want, the kinds of attributes to look for in a NAT. I suggest that you get my white paper and, uh, and go from there and see if you like that. You're always welcome to, to contact me with any questions, any concerns, any topics that you'd like me to do a video on. I've been uh, really happy and enjoy doing these kind of videos. I hope that you find them useful. Thank you very much.